Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Aji Shafe. Well, we continue with matches over the weekend. A lot of activities in the world of sport. But we look at La Liga. Barcelona are now eight point clear after Real Madrid blew the opportunity before they faced their Sevilla. Barcelona really did well winning that particular game 3 0 as Gavi, Rafinha, they were on song for the uh, blow runners there talking about barcelona i have in the studio joseph let's run this together uh, thank, you. thank you okay uh you saw barcelona they were able to win that game uh, you know real madrid what's happening they, it's like attention is on champions league uh, club world cup and they are not really paying so much uh, attention to uh, in the league i think there's so much uh, distortion to the real madrid squad mm. in the sense that injury to Germany just came out of nowhere it kind of like uh, unsettled them. Injury to Benzema too, at a certain stage, it unsettled them. Yesterday, there wasn't Benzema in the squad. Um, oh, that was the day before yesterday. Mm, was that the, oh, yesterday, mm. was it yesterday? The Barcelona played on Sunday. On, oh, yeah, Barcelona mm -hmm. played yesterday, but I'm talking about Madrid now. So there's something not just happening for Madrid. Um, I think uh, Vinicius is taking too many touches. He's holding on to the ball too much. He, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think that Asensio is, is not really kicking like he used to prior to his injury. Look, okay, let's focus on Barcelona now. Let, let, let's even leave, because Real Madrid seems not to be understanding what they are playing when it comes to league. But Barcelona seems to, you know, immediately they have stage rear and took over that particular table. They've, not, they've actually not looked back. We, we were here at the beginning of the season and we wasn't giving so much expectation and wasn't having so much expectation for, for, for Barcelona mm. this season. Now look at how far they have come. Mm. Javi has done a great job. Goals is coming from everywhere. And I know just Lewandowski. Gavi is scoring. Ravinha, Ravinha, Ravinha is, is scoring. scoring. Dembele is scoring. Alba even. is scoring. Alba is even is scoring. So the whole thing is, is working out for them right now. And see, ever since they took over the, 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 the position, it's like they're not looking back. Mm. They just keep on winning game after game, mounting more pressure on whoever is chasing them, being Madrid now. And Madrid is not really in, they are, they are not just there. I don't know, I don't know what's exactly wrong. I can't say this is exactly, I can't say it's even the injuries because we've seen them pull performances out of nowhere even when things are not kicking, but they are not even doing that anymore. So good, I, I think I, I'll, just, I'll just say maybe congrats to Barcelona because it really looks like they, they are not going to be challenged for the title. Well, from the way it is, uh, Barcelona are running away. Eight points clear. And from the way it is, uh, well, Barria just need to work hard if they are to win the La Liga because Barcelona would not want to drop any point. They are running away with it. A fantastic one for them after a lot of people were hoping that uh, maybe Real would reduce the tally, but they never did. And for against Sevilla for Barcelona, they did well winning that particular game. Now, still talking about La Liga, let's look at how it happened in different locations. Looking at the result there, Bibao defeated Cadiz 4 1. El Che, the one against Villarreal, was also happening to uh, Chukwese's team. Uh, not doing well at all. Osasuna 1 1 against Espanyol. Mallorca 1. Real Madrid, that was a game that actually uh, breaks the cameras <laughs> uh, Celta Vigo 4-3 seven goal thriller in that game you have uh, Atletico Madrid against Getafe 1-1 one, one at the Wanda and you have uh, Girona 1 against Valencia the same thing Valencia uh, Sociedad they also lost by uh, being defeated by Real Valladolid Barcelona winning it seems all the big guys but, but, <laughs> but there's something about this week not just in the Liga. all the big guys it, lost it, even, even in the Premiership Yes. In the La Liga, it's the same thing. I don't know. So, so, you know, you have weeks like that. Where like everybody, where all the, yeah, the, all every, the teams you were expecting to, yeah, to win, we just lose. We just lose. Aside Barcelona and Manchester, I think maybe Napoli in Italy and Inter, also beating another big team, by the way. I think even Olympic Marseille mm. lost yesterday. So, I don't know, maybe it's a bad week for the big team. <laughs> <laughs> the big guys into all their game, maybe they have to do well. But right now, we look at the table. Barcelona are really edging away. They have an eight-point lead ahead of Real Madrid, who are trailing them with 45 to 53. So, Saidat, who lost, 39, they have as point. Madrid, who lost, they have 35 points. Villarreal also lost, they have 13. <laughs> they their way to go. Real Betis, Atletico, Rayo, Osasuna, Mallorca. In that pecking order, if you look at uh, from 11 to 20 right now, Girona, Celta de Vigo, 
Real Valladolid, the winning teams also try to up their game. Almeria, Espanyol, Sevilla, what is happening to Sevilla and Valencia. Standing 16 and 17 on the low with a minus 8 a goal difference. This is not the Sevilla we know. Cadiz, Ketafe and Elche. Sevilla, Sevilla and Villarreal, something is uh, very, very wrong. Because you maybe look back and you see that so at some point they try to win it, maybe two or three games at a stretch. Mm. And then when you are thinking that they are coming back, and then they get to lose again. The same thing happens to, happen to Villarreal now. The same thing is happening to Sevilla. They, they, swap, they swap coaches and they started doing well. And then look at how bad they, they, it has gone for them. So maybe something is wrong. They need to correct it. Mm. Because they are among the teams really people look up to in the La Liga. The, so Sevilla especially should not be in this other side of the log. Well, from the way it is, we move away from uh, Barcelona. But uh, a particular Nigerian, Victor Sime, has really been on fire since he moved to Italy for Napoli. Right now, he also scored a brace uh, in the game that he played. Right now, having at least 16 goals for himself in Italia Serie A. Defensive league, but he's scoring so easy. Osime double leads uh, Napoli to a 3-0 win over Spezia. Well, good one for Osime. And uh, right now, Osime is really doing well. We just, he just can't take that away from him. He's just scoring goals from everywhere. And mm. I'm happy for him. Yesterday, I, I thought he was going to score a hat-trick, but he, he didn't get it. But uh, if, if Kravashalia had allowed him to take the penalty, maybe it would have been a yeah, hat-trick hat -trick. for him. But I like the chemistry between them. Kravashalia is always providing the assist for all the goals mm. Osimen is scoring. So it's a good thing for him, and we're happy for him. At least he's one of ours. A good one for Victor Osime. Continue to bang him on goals. They are still talking about Italia. So they are. It was a big one. Uh, David Italia. But they are, when it comes to Italia, so they are Inter Milan facing the uh, team called AC Milan. It ended in favor of the Blues uh, well, in Italy there. That's Inter Milan was able to win. Uh, let's look at that particular story first anyway. Martinez Eda wins Milan Derby for Inter Milan. Martinez was able to make the difference in that particular game. Martinez has been able to up his game after a woeful performance in the World Cup. Mm. Ever since he came back, he has been scoring goals. And initially, even look on paper, you would expect Inter Milan to win the game because it has really been a bad winning streak, for, losing streak for, for AC Milan. They have not really been, been doing well lately. And the, even the, 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 they are, the, the striking, uh, the, their striking for this thing has uh, kind of diminished their performance. The wonders uh, Giroud used to put in, put in has kind of diminished. So mm. the, the, there's something really wrong at uh, AC Milan. But look at Inter. Even though they have done the swap of captain, uh, uh, Skriniar used to be the captain, but because he wanted to leave, it has to, it had to be given to La Lautaro Martinez, and mm. uh, and probably the the, hand, the handband that has given to that has been given to him has kind of like uh, boosted his performance, boosted his performance, mm. and given him more I don't know uh, morale, morale, to perform. yeah, to perform. So yeah, it's good for them. It's, it's, good an expected, for it's an expected loss for for AC Milan anyway. A good one for Argentine Lautaro Martinez uh, in that particular game there. Scoring for Inter Milan to peep AC Milan in that match there. Well, let's look at the way the matches are, other matches that were being played. Let's look at the results. Uh, Manoise lost against Leche 2 0. You have uh, Sridesa there. Well, he couldn't uh, save his team. Roma against Empoli 2 0. Good one for Roma. Sassuolo won against Atalanta, where Ademola Lukma could not score at uh, this time around. He has been trailing Osime uh, on when it comes to goal scoring in Italy. Uh, Napoli, yes, that was where Osime got uh, two goals against Spezia. Torino Udinese 1 0. Fiorentina lost against Bologna at home. And Inter Milan, because of Lotaro Martinez Eda, they defeated AC Milan in that game at San Siro. Let's look at the table for, uh, from the way it is right now. Napoli are still coasting home there. They are leading with so much, uh, so much space between them and Inter Milan. Uh, you have uh, Inter trailing them for the three points. And if you want to look at it, it's a whole lot of uh, points between the two teams, 13 uh, points ahead. You have Roma, actually, Roma now standing third with uh, 40 points. Lazio, Atalanta, AC Milan, 60 now. Torino, Udinese, Bologna, and Poli with 26 points standing 10th on the log. And if you look at Monza, Monza at the 11th, Fiorentina 12th, Juventus are now 15. Oh, well, right. remember the deduction of 15 points from their uh, point. They have 15, 23 points. Lecce, Sassuolo, Salanitana, Sampdoria, and Cremonese. I, 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 uh, I'm to, uh, um, I observed that uh, the, the case against uh, Juventus is not really over yet. 
that there could be more points deduction coming down for them, which would probably send them to relegation. Mm. Uh, they need to change their ways of the injuries. It has happened to them before. I remember the car show issue that happened some years back, where they were also uh, taken down to uh, City B. So uh, Juventus need to stop the issue of uh, bribery and that's always exactly, trying to do. That's exactly what I'm saying. Of, they, uh, they need to change. They are always uh, in one problem yeah, or the other. one problem or the other. Always changing figures and man, 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 manipulating things. And or it, fixing it, it, matches. Yeah, fixing matches, and it has never done them good. It has always brought this kind of sanctions to them. Then maybe they should check, even all the nice criteria that they want back to back, they should check. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, nice, yeah. The nice questions should, should be, be asked questioned. there, yeah. really. It should be questioned. Because you can't have a team that was subjected to relegation uh, into a uh, uh, second tier, they came back, and now they are repeating the, the same errors. And that tells you that they've been, they, they, they never repented. Mm. Well, from the way it is, uh, Juventus needs to be questioned. A lot of uh, issues here and there concerning that club. But Napoli are really coasting home now, making the lead now to the team ahead of uh, the uh, uh, rival, the closest rival is Inter Milan, uh, who are actually trailing them 56. And you look at uh, uh, 43, 7 plus 6, yeah, there is the team. Good one for Napoli. They really need to work more. But right now, they are really reading the tally, 17 matches to go, and they can do this. It is very possible. Now, we quickly move away from there. Let's look at some results from German and also French League on uh, quickly. Result from there, where Oxford defeated Bayern Leverkusen 1 0. Leipzig play 0 0. You have Monte Glaba also playing in against Chakao 4. It was a seven goal thriller between Bochum 1848 against uh, Hoffenheim 5 2. Intran Frankfurt 3, Atta Berlin 0. Borussia Dortmund, good one for them. 5-1 against Freiburg, nearly spelling the, uh, the <laughs> name of Freiburg there. Wolfsburg 4, Bayern, uh, rather, Wolfsburg 2, Bayern uh, 4, 4-2 four there. And you have Vada Bremen 2, Stuttgart 0. And you look at uh, Union Berlin winning against Mainz 5 And if you look at French League 1, let's look at their own result also as it went down. You have PSG, Messi was able to score there against Toulouse 2-1. Troyes lost against uh, Leon. Olympic Leon winning 3-1 away. Lille 3-1 away. Clermont almost uh, away teams are uh, dominating over the weekend. Mm. Monaco, Nantes. You have La Cachette among the scorers there for Leon. You have Nantes there. Well, Moussin Simon's team doing well. They are tuning against Ayasio. Oxel uh, drawing. Also Lorient also drawing. Strasbourg tuning against Montpellier. Brest 1-1 against Lens. And OGC needs where Tremofi. <laughs> yes. I know you want to talk about that one. <laughs> the one against OG Olympic Marcel 3-1. I thought, I didn't, I didn't, I never imagined that Marcel were going to lose this game. Against OG Sydney, no, right? No, I never, I never, I never saw Tere it. Tere to the rescue now. And so, so they, 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 they put themselves among the list of those uh, top teams that were supposed to win but lost during the weekend. Mm. And it's a good one for Nice and it's congratulations to Tere Murphy. A good one for OG Sydney there. They did the undoable, yes. Uh, surprising Olympic Marcel, the city of Marcel. Between them, no one saw that coming. You know, whenever any time you play against all the big uh, boys, uh, a lot of people underrate you. But really, OG Sydney never ever gave up. They showed their class winning that game 3 1 there. Believe in yourself, you never can tell where you see yourself. Now, let's do that fixtures uh, for tonight. Matches will be coming up. Uh, we have Rayo Vallecano in La Liga against Almeria. Italia City, I have Elas Verona against Lazio. Sampdoria away to Monza. Uh, uh, the match between uh, uh, Hellas Verona and Lazio, Lazio were, were doing well until the last game they lost. Mm. So you, you don't know what to expect from them. They are okay, good qualities. Trying to say maybe they are inconsistent. They are, they, yeah, they are a bit inconsistent. Their inconsistency is not really high as to other uh, clubs. But when you expect them to win a match, that's when they get to lose that match. Like the last match they lost at home. They weren't supposed to lose at home, but they lost at home. Mm -hmm. After good performance and after much pressure, even in the game against uh, Juventus, where they lost a goal down, where they, where they lost one goal, one nil, they, they really played well. So you'd be thinking that, okay, coming into another game, they should you know, put up that same performance and maybe win since it's against a lesser opponent. But then that's when they get to lose. Uh, a game that the, the, that kind of performance, I don't think it, it just keeps you at the middle of the table. And Glasgow is a big team; they should be uh, uh, they should be among those who should make it to to Europe. So, who are you looking at to win this game between Hellas Verona and Lazio? Uh, honestly, if you ask me, I think it's going to be a draw. Hmm. Yeah, Monza Sampdoria. Monza will take. Monza will win. Monza are on a good run of form right now. They hmm. just beat uh, uh, Juve a couple of weeks ago. 
they've been doing well. Rayo Vallecano Almeria. Ah. <laughs> I've been for that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good one there. Just giving you update concerning matches later for this evening. Matches will be coming up over there in Italia. So there are two matches and one in Spanish La Liga, where Almeria will be playing their trick against uh, Rayo there. Now, we quickly move away to talk about some transfer story, although uh, the window are actually closed, but uh, the summer transfer window will, still, uh, will soon be open. And uh, a lot of clubs are looking at what will, be, will they be doing? Will they be buying? Will they be selling? Will they be sacking coaches? Let's look at Liverpool. Liverpool will listen to offers for centre back Joao Matip in the summer. Joao Matip has been at Liverpool for a long time now. The standard has dropped. Of course, you would expect coming from age uh, increase. So it's a good thing for him. He has achieved everything he needs to achieve as a footballer, at least club-wise, at Liverpool. So it's a actually. It's actually not, not, not bad if he leaves the club now. This like bowing out uh, respectfully and, and taking the bow at the right time, mm -hmm. going to another uh, smaller club and then continuing his career. Maybe even go to Americas or the Asias for money. Brazilian midfielder Felipe Coutinho right now is being pursued by Galatasaray. They could be coming for him on loan transfers. He moved to Aston Villa. Really, it has not been the way, the same Coutinho that we knew in Liverpool. I don't think it's since, since he moved to Aston Villa. I think it's since he left Liverpool. Mm. He has never been the, the same. The, the, the biggest Liverpool. mistake was to leave Liverpool to Barcelona. That was a mistake. I don't know why they tend to make those kind of mistakes. I've seen it happen. With no, but, but really, players. as a player, when the, the teams like Barcelona are coming for you, what do you expect? Yeah. And really, it was doing well in, in Liverpool. It's so a, it, they it, expected him to do well also in Barcelona, but it never clicked. Yeah, you would think he's doing well at Liverpool, and then he should do well at Barcelona. But when you are going into a team, you need to study the project. You need to study the team you are going to. At, at that time, they had Javi, Iniesta, and Messi. Mm. But Coutinho has no business in that squad because there was no way he was going to play consistently. There was no way he was going to play. Let's not forget that Neymar and Suarez was also there. Mm. What was he going to do there? He should have immortalized himself at Liverpool. Liverpool. That's what I expected from somebody like Cesc Fabregas as at that time. The same thing. They went and... It was, although Barcelona won some things, but you know how you, you know that your contribution is not much given, even when everybody's celebrating your celebration. Last day in Arsenal yeah. before joining Barcelona. What, look at how they all fizzled away their career for nothing. Mm. If they had stayed, they would have been immortalized. Each of those places they were. Even the, the, the tall and trouble, I don't want to call him trouble <laughs> <some> now, is <laughs> Latan Ibrahimovic. And he too didn't click in he Barcelona. Yeah, he didn't click. He, he, and he was at AC Milan, mm. and he should have stayed. No, Inter Milan, I mm. think. He should have stayed. But you, there are a lot of transfer like that. Another transfer, sorry to bring this up, but another transfer that I thought could have gone better was Mikel Obi to Chelsea instead of Manchester United. Mm. Because he was an attacking midfielder, playing well, scoring goals, even dribbling, moving forward. And he had a spot. There was a vacuum created for him by Alex Ferguson to fill in at Manchester United. But instead, he chose to go to where there is Michael Essien, Michael Ballack, Frank and Lampard. And him around. And, and look, at what, look at what they have turned him to. So I don't know why these players make these mistakes. Sometimes it's for money. but. I think your performance will bring about the money. The Manchester United take, also have the money, but I think he loves Chelsea more, maybe. I think there was a slight change in the figures of his salary that year. Well, and I think the influence of a man, an, an ML Malo, what's mm. his name, cost all those things. Well, from the way it is right now, Philippe Coutinho will just be like, if I had known, I would have stayed in my Liverpool and be enjoying my football. Well, that's football for you at times. It doesn't go away. I still remember Diego Forlan moving to Manchester United. It never went well. And also not forgetting uh, a lot of uh, players who Maybe. actually uh, did that. Now, before we go, PSG in talks uh, with Argentina World Cup winner Lionel Messi over a new contract, even though new David at uh, Saudi Arabia clubs wants him. Uh, other one says maybe L MLS. Or this one says PSG are in talk with Argentine uh, World Cup winner. Lionel Messi. He's the king of football right now. So everybody will want the king to come visit. But I think PSG are going to keep him for at least a year. Mm. And then after that, I believe Lionel Messi will go to uh, Asia. 
because they have they have those those Arabians have the money to bring in. They will offer him something he cannot be able to turn down. Let's say maybe we move to the Middle East and at least join Saudi Arabia club. Maybe Ali Lai against Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> the rivalry will continue. But uh, the last one says Chelsea are uh, open to Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique, if they choose to replace Graham, the Porter. Well, <laughs> Graham Porter <laughs> is the coach right now, but uh, a lot of people are looking at him as, uh, some people call him agri coach, some people say, well, he's good at Brighton, but since he moved, uh, uh, Chelsea is too big for him and all that. Chelsea were following uh, Arsenal Twitter handles and were stealing players that we want to buy, and they thought it's all about buying players and all that and all that. Now they have uh, uh, snatched players, they have bought whatever they need to buy, and the, the squad is too, too full. And it's filled up, and the coach doesn't know what to do with them, which is expected. Mm. It's just expected. He has never been in that level before. He has never been, he has never experienced anything like this. He was a, a coach to Brighton where the groom players sell and make money. They were middle table toppers, and it's not as if he has been in any big club. So this is a, an entirely new situation for Graham Potter which I don't expect him to be able to deal with it well. If they bring in Luis Enrique, fine. But they don't need only Enrique. They need to boot out players. They need to boot out players and get some of those players out of the window if mm -hmm. they really want to have a good free flow of uh, football by you know, you know, picking the right squad and then creating the chemistry that is needed for, that, uh, for their game. Well, just uh, to let you know, that will be it on 360 Spot on Trust TV. Joe Peter, good to have you on the good show. Good to have you, sir. Thank you. Sir. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.